Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Today we're going to talk about the culmination of all, our, all of our hard work in uh, doing root canal therapy, namely filling the root canal. Uh, since we did the gutta percha preparation first in our previous sequences, we'll talk about filling the root canal with gutta percha in this tape. Uh, before we get into it, though, how do we know when a root canal is ready to be filled? There are four criteria that we generally use, and all four of them are equally important. The first is the tooth should be totally asymptomatic. The second is that the cleaning and shaping should be totally complete. Thirdly, uh, the tooth, when you open into it on the filling appointment, should be clean and dry. And finally, all of your negative cultures should be taken and approved. Once these are done, the tooth is probably ready to be filled. Now, since it's been prepared for gutta percha, we're going to talk about a lateral condensation technique for filling root canals. This is only one of many ways to fill a tooth with the gutta percha, but it's a tried and true technique. If uh, you master this and you want to go on and try other techniques, talk to an instructor. He'll be more than happy to uh, help you out. But we'll stick to this one for uh, our videotape presentations. Now, in the um, lateral condensation of gutta percha technique, uh, the first thing we do is fit a master cone of gutta percha. And that cone will co correspond in uh, number or size to the last size file that you used in the tooth. In other words, uh, in our case, we took a tooth up to a size 50 file. We'll use a size 50 master gutta percha cone as our master point. Um, and that should correspond fairly closely uh, in both size, shape, and taper with the size 50 file. Now, I want to uh, go on and show, uh, in this tape, show you how to fit that master gutta percha cone. And in a subsequent tape, we'll show you uh, the actual filling procedures. Now, let's go to an artist's representation and show you the ideal features of a properly fit master gutta percha cone. Now, here's the, the um, ideal preparation in a maxillary central incisor for gutta percha cone. You can see it's parallel and round, apical two to three millimeters, and flared in the rest of the body of the canal, just the way we left it in the previous tape. Now, let me show you how a uh, uh, properly fit gutta percha cone looks. Here we have the gutta percha cone, and it has all the requirements that we need uh, for a proper fit, in that it goes all the way to the working length within a millimeter or a, mil or a half a millimeter. It's not shaped the exact uh, shape as the last file. Last file is pointed, and this is kind of blunt, so it won't go all, all the way to your working length, but it'll get within a half a millimeter or a millimeter. So the first criteria that we use is length. The second criteria that we use is fit, in that it uh, should fit very loosely up in the body where it's flared, and it should fit very tightly or snugly in this apical two to three millimeters, completely obliterating the space in cross-section. Now, how do you tell whether it fits properly? Uh, if you tell by whether the gutta percha cone has retention in the canal. Now, just as a crown uh, needs retention to fit properly, if you put a crown on a tooth before you cement it, cement it and it just comes loose very easily, you know that it doesn't have the proper fit. Well, just the same in a gutta percha cone. If you put it uh, in the canal and you can just pull it right out without any resistance or retention, uh, then you know that it's not properly fit. However, if you have to tug it out, uh, then you know that you've got retention and it, properly f and it, and it does fit if it's at the proper length. Now, uh, you know that it's, uh, the retention is coming from this area since that uh, if it's, uh, the cone has been inserted to the proper length and the rest of the canal is flared, it can only be binding in this apical two to three millimeters. So this retention we call tug back. So you need length and tug back. And once you get these two, you cut the point off at your reference point, uh, and then you take a final x-ray. 
and that verifies that it is in fact fitting and does have the proper length. When you get this x-ray, you go to your instructor and have this uh, step checked. Now let me show you two uh, common errors in fitting master gutta percha cones. Um, here you can see that the gutta percha cone goes all the way to the proper length. But in this case, it doesn't fit very well in this apical two to three millimeters. In the cross section, you can see that uh, you would have space around the gutta percha cone, which would leave a channel for bacteria to get in here and would reduce your chances of success. In this type of case, you would have proper length, but you wouldn't have proper tugback. And uh, that's how you would tell that this isn't fitting properly. Now, there'll be no way to fill this space unless you do it with the fitted point. So you have to do it right from the beginning. Now, the second uh, common error is when you uh, do get a little bit of tugback, as you would in this case, but you don't have proper length. Now, the gutta percha would bind in this area. And since it's uh, kind of semi-rigid, you could force it down here and get a little bit of tugback, uh, even though you completely not filled this space at all. Uh, so you would know this by the fact that the gutta percha cone doesn't go all the way to your working length. So in this case, you have tugback, but not the length. And you can see why you need both tugback and length and the x-ray to verify a properly fitted cone. Now, in setting up for this uh, filling appointment, I just want to show you one thing in particular. Uh, to save yourself some time, uh, before you should set up almost anything else, uh, you ought to get your master gutta percha cone, check it out from the dispensary, and put it in your zephyrin chloride. In this case, I'm using a 50 master gutta percha cone, and it's got to be completely immersed in zephyrin for 20 minutes before we can put it in the tooth. So uh, uh, before I set anything else up and before the patient comes, I start that soaking so I won't have to waste any time with it. I also take out some accessory cones, uh, some extra fine cones, and I'll cut off the very tip, just about the one millimeter tip uh, that's very sharp and it's hard to get in, and I'll put about 20 accessory cones in the zephyrin before the patient comes. And then that'll be soaking, so when we get everything else set up, uh, we'll be ready to fit the master cone and uh, then fill. For the filling appointment, we'll show you uh, the instruments, I mean, that you'll be setting up at the same time, but uh, we'll show those in the tape that we do on the actual filling. So let's go to the tooth now, and I'll show you, um, once this is set for 20 minutes, I'll show you uh, how to fit it properly for your master gutta percha cone. Now the cone has been soaking. We've uh, set up our cubicle with our uh, filling set and our normal cubicle set up. We've uh, taken the patient in, uh, put the uh, rubber dam in place. We've opened the tooth. Uh, we've taken out all of the dressing. And I just want to show you that the tooth is open. It's clean. Uh, it's been totally dry. It's asymptomatic. And we're ready to go. So. Um, we take the gutta percha cone out of the zephyrin, put it in the fold of the sterile cotton, uh, sterile towel setup, and uh, dry it off. And while we're doing that, we take the last instrument that we put down the uh, canal, which was a number all the way down, which is a number 50 file, and make sure that the canal is open all the way to the apex. You can see that the file goes down to uh, the proper length. So we'll take that out. We've uh, adjusted this file. Uh, previously to make sure that this is the length, uh, our proper working length. We take that out and we take our disinfected master gutta percha cone, which is a size 50, and put it down as far as it will go. Now, we make sure it won't go any farther. We grab it right at the incisal edge and take it out. And then we'll check the length, first of all, by pushing it against the file that we just uh, verified. Now you can see right here that the master gutta percha cone is too short. Now there are two ways uh, to change this. Now this can happen because gutta percha cones are not uh, as closely standardized as files, and this could be a rather large number 50 gutta percha cone. That's why we have to uh, custom fit each one. Now there are two ways to uh, get by this problem. One is to get another cone 
and try it in, either a 50 or a 40, but then would have to wait 20 minutes to, uh, to disinfect it before we could put it in the tooth. So what we'll do is to take the uh, file and uh, re-instrument, uh, use the file to its uh, fullest instrumentation. We thought we did, but uh, this is a good indication that we still have some a little bit more work to do. So we'd put some sodium hypochloride in the canal and would instrument it a little bit more, maybe take it to a little bit uh, larger size file, and then uh, we'll dry it out again and try the uh, gutta percha cone. You put the gutta percha cone back in the fold of your sterile towel kit and you start to instrument this out. Now when this is finished instrumenting out, we'll come back and try and fit the cone. Okay, now we're done with the instrumentation. So um, let me dry this out, make sure that it's all dry. We have some paper points. I've actually dried it beforehand just to make the thing go uh, quicker, but it should be uh, flooded and now it's totally dry, just to show you that. And we'll try the gutta percha cone again and make sure that we have our proper length. So you put the gutta percha cone in all the way, take it out by grabbing it right at the incisal edge, your reference point, and come back and check it for length. Now this time, as you can see, it's right where it should be. It comes right down to that uh, PCA stop. So we've got our length verified. Now we have to uh, adjust the fit. And when we adjust the fit, we want to make sure that uh, we don't jeopardize uh, the fit, I mean the length for fit. So the way that we adjust the fit, it doesn't fit properly now. It's just in and out. There's no tug back at all, no fit down there. And there, it seems quite loose. So I'll take the point out and I'll cut off about a millimeter. And now the, the point, uh, since it's tapered, is a little bit larger at that apical uh, point. So we'll put it back in. This time it goes in farther. And now I can feel a little bit of grab. So I'll take it out again. It's not enough grab to make me happy. That's too much. You take off a little bit each time. You don't want to go too much or else you'll have to uh, re-instrument again. Because then it not only, uh, it'll fit properly, but you won't get down to your proper length. So we keep on going. That was a little bit much, but I think that uh, we'll still be able to do this. Okay, now I'm starting to get some having to tug. I know this is hard just to look at it, to, um, to know what I'm feeling, but all you have to do is one of these and feel proper tug back, and you'll be able to do it. Okay, a little bit more. I'm just about there. One more time, and then I'll remeasure my length to make sure I haven't lost length. And if I haven't, okay, there, yeah, that's good. I take it, I can't push it any farther. I have to pull pretty hard to get it loose. Now I grab it at the incisal edge. I'm looking in my sterile towel kit. Okay, there's the file that I put down to uh, judge the length. I'll take it out. Now, if it matches up, and it matches within a millimeter, good. So now I'll put it back in, and I'll take a radiograph. Oh, first of all, let me cut it off. That's right, because you want to make sure that this is at the proper length. So I'll cut it off flush with my incisal edge so I know when I seat it back I'm always going to the same point. And I leave it a little bit long so that I can grab onto it and still be right at my incisal edge. Okay, so it's cut off and I'll take my final radiograph and when I show you the final radiograph, um, I mean when I see the final radiograph and it looks proper then I'll show it to the instructor and we're ready to go ahead and actually fill the case.
Here's the final radiograph. As you can see, the point goes all the way down to our working length, fits very snugly in the apical area, and yet there's plenty of room for lateral condensation along the side. So we've gotten our three criteria. It's length, the tugback, and the radiograph looks good, so we're ready for our fill. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.